ask my roommate if people are coming why don't we start a pizza business on campus <laughs> telling you the first time was a total failure <laughs> channel if you are new here my name is venice if you are not you are welcome thank you for coming back to watch my videos please hit on the subscribe button and hit on the bell beside the subscribe button to get the notifications of all the new videos today i come your way with an interesting episode i promise you guys that i'll be coming your way with interviews and today i'm pleased to tell you that i have an interview coming your way and so our topic today is how to earn money as a university student time with a student entrepreneur and so I welcome my guest here welcome thank you okay please can you tell them your name and something small about yourself okay my name is isi benyo amwa but most people know me as mami isi yeah. And most people know me on campus as the pizza girl. Hi. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> something small about myself. I like to make people comfortable when I left. I like to make people like enjoy themselves and get what they want, especially with food. Yeah. Hey, with food. <laughs> wow. Okay, so Mamisi is a student entrepreneur at University of Mines and Technology, Yuma at Takwa. And so I'll be asking her questions about her business, what she does, and with her studies as well. And so stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. Sure. You don't want to miss out. <laughs> okay, so let's get to it. How did you start your business? And what business do you actually do on campus? Okay, so um, I do um, pizza business on campus, cakes, um, ice creams, milkshakes. And many others so how I started my business it's actually not only for me it's for me and my roommate she's also called Christine Akudom anyway um, we started this okay a story way before my birthday in to, which year which year I think this year oh, okay. that's uh, 2020 yeah, right? around around January yeah we went to a restaurant in Takwa to get pizza so when we went our last money was, I think, 50 cities. So we used it to buy the pizza. I think it was 45 cities or something. And we used the five cities for some drink or anything. We ordered, we couldn't even eat there. So we went to the uh, hostel to eat. But while we're eating, this taste sour. Sure. Uh, we didn't know what was wrong with it. And that was our first time tasting their pizza. So oh, okay. we didn't actually like it. So. My birthday was coming up and we wanted to like wanted to throw some small party or something. So uh, my roommate was like to add pizzas, drinks or drinks and some biscuits or something for the guests who be coming to chill. So we didn't have that amount to go and buy another pizza. So what we did was my roommate went online, mostly YouTube. People underestimate YouTube, but that's very wrong because most of what I know now, I learned it from YouTube and I've perfected it. So please, if you learn something from someone, try and give them some credit for it. So my roommate went on YouTube, got the list that we needed. The cheese was the one which was expensive, so we went to buy all the stuffs. And I would say the first trial was total failure. <laughs> <laughs> like, you see, the American, we learned it from one white lady, and it was, she had an oven and everything. But one, we only had a microwave and a cylinder with a gas. So, <laughs> telling you, the first time was a total failure. Yeah. So, the next day we decided, so it wasn't my bed at that time, but we were trying it. So, the next day we decided to do another one. We did one, it was coming up small, small. We knew the mistakes we made the other time and we knew that some things are there, we couldn't get it. Yeah. So we have to improvise for it. And one thing is the microwave can, uh, let me see, it can cook the top. 
like let me see the toppings and everything sure. but with the browning of the whole thing mm -hmm. they can't do that yeah. so we had to improvise and that's when we started using the, uh, the gas oh, okay. so we did that and we perfected it so one time so yeah. when they came for the party and they oh, ate it they were like yeah. the pizza is nice. nice so my friends are my hostel so one day they were there and they just came they were like they ate the pizza the other time it was nice they would <laughs> like to try, try another one again. so okay. they wanted to buy the stuff and we were like i asked my roommate if people are coming why don't we start a pizza business on campus because yeah. we are students and we can make it affordable price for them because if I compare our prices to the outside, this thing, ours is far better. And yeah. I wouldn't praise myself, but I like the comments I get from people. Sure. So what is the key driving force in your business? Like what drives you on? What Mostly moves you? It's the satisfaction of my my customers. Sure. Oh, okay. They are satisfied. I'm that totally satisfied. Cute. Yeah. Oh, okay. As the idea came for you to start this pizza business, what did you have any money to start with it at that time, or you went for a loan? Or so at first, mostly most of the stuff we went to buy, I told you was a pair of Sure. So, so what was left was what we used to start back. We were just using our pocket money, small, small. Sure. So sometimes when we need tomatoes, we just use maybe ten cents to go and buy our own money when we need something. So as we graduated, so I think when we're coming back to the second semester, we really planned very well that oh, we okay. might need this amount in my soul. We actually invested all our savings into it. Oh, what do you use to build your customer base? Can you tell us? Mostly, I'll see shout outs to my uh, customers and mostly uh, my friends. Most When I just send out a flyer sure. and they are ready to share. Sure. So I really I like them for that. that. So one thing is, someone would say maybe I'm maybe wasting my students, whatever I'm learning here for it. But I say that when I came here, I met some people. Build your social life. Be friends with some people. Some people I don't know them. They just have my WhatsApp contact, and I share it to them. Sure. So the first time they will just try it, they'll be like, "Oh, your pizza is nice. nice." So please, like, maybe it's not always that I get that it's nice you get it sure. but sometimes when they have a problem they'll inform me oh i do this i do that i did this i didn't like that so please try and work on it mm -hmm. so i mostly store my customers numbers and whenever i have a new flyer i want yeah, them to share, share something i just yeah. send it to them and they share it with i wanted to ask you what marketing strategy you use but it's like you've answered it already by sharing your flyers with your friends for them yeah. to share for you and so i would say that is that the only tactic that you use in marketing your business or you have other strategies not all that so one time you know official currents right like sure, sure. Yeah. so one time i just took my own bucket to my be like i want to send him pizza and let him try it out mm -hmm. since he's a social media influencer he can influence the public too sure. so i just sent it to him and i was there and he sent me an advertisement video sure. i was like i was so glad that he liked it and could send me an what do you call an advertisement video and also sometimes i just some of the lecturers like this i just send let me see a box of pizza to them just to try it out and sure. recommend me to people so mostly sometimes if you have the money like if you have the money let's say there is a show going on on campus then just be like oh i would like to sponsor this show sure. you know, or you are trying to advertise yourself sure Oh, okay. So it's not always about the profits coming in. You just have to sacrifice to get the greater profits later. Okay. So you share it, like you just give it out to others, and in return they also help you in yes. marketing. That is that is good. So as a student and as an entrepreneur, how do you blend studies with working on campus? I wouldn't say it's totally difficult and I wouldn't say it's totally easy but one thing well what I do sometimes go with what I, I'm someone who doesn't normally like studying during the day so I do my studies at night 
and when i started this business i remember sometimes we, i think we, when we close from class let's say maybe my last class at 68 we start preparation of even the stuffs that we use alone for the pizza can take like two hours and in preparing to sometimes you can even work till 12. Yeah. Been eight, yeah so it was quite hard for me because i was someone who normally sleeps by nine and wake up yeah. by 1 a.m to study but it was quite hard for me so what i had to do was if i could study then after i sleep but sometimes it's very hectic to the extent that sometimes i'll be in class and with a kid someone will call me that the person the is okay <laughs> milkshake like you call me <laughs> but anyway i just use that as an opportunity for me to practice in my life like sure. i know i'm supposed to let's see do pizza at this time let's say i start around 6 30 or 5 30 i'm supposed to maybe uh, do the preparation and everything i hope by 10 i'm closed oh so within if i can even still for within three hours and just go back and go and learn i'm okay with cool. it so can you tell us how many hours on the average do you work in a day? Like five hours or four hours. Five hours or four hours yes. for only your work day. Let's say tell? not for uh, what do you call for normal working days. Oh, like okay. let's say weekdays, but with what um, weekends it can take like six hours. Oh, okay. Sure. So can you outline your typical day? Let's say I wake up at this time. I do this. I do that. And on a typical day okay so on let's say a saturday right okay. a saturday mostly we don't have class and all so what i'll do is i'll go to the market and mostly i bake cakes on saturday cakes are cake in carbo okay. so i bake the cakes on saturday so i have to go to the market get the stuff that i need and then come back let's say if i go to the market around let's say eight I'll come back around probably 9, 9.30. So when I come back, I start preparation of the cakes. And I have a small oven, so I have to manage with that. Yeah. So the cake, uh, what do you call it? The cake takes a lot of time. That's the problem. It takes a lot of time. So I might finish, I might not even finish baking the cakes, but pizza will have to start. So by three, uh, you have to start preparation for the pizza, cutting of the gizzard and everything chicken and everything so within that by the time maybe we are done setting up for the pizza maybe the cakes will be done oh. then we start with the pizza to maybe like 9 30. okay so from what i know you started with only pizza right yeah and as time went by i seen that you are adding a lot yes so how do you come up with your ideas mm -hmm. how do you come up with them mostly i look around and check what i don't see around sure. then i just tap into it so when i started the case the cake at first i was in baking it oh, okay. so i had a vendor who was baking it for me but the problem was my customers would like a particular flavor more than the other oh, one okay. but she would see that the other flavors are a bit expensive because you have to increase the prices and all and i didn't want my customers to be like there is an increase in the prices or because i'm a student sure. i know how we can buy money and all that so i have to take them into consideration so i started baking them myself okay. so the cakes that i saw on campus that there is no one selling cakes, selling actually. cakes on campus sure. and the thing is even if they could also go and buy from my old customer they will have to deliver it okay. so what i did was i went there Majority of the hostels, maybe the popular hostels on campus like Katy, Chimbers, Hilda, Corazon, and all that. So I actually took a vendor from like each of the a halls. student, yes, a student from each of the halls, okay. and then I made them a deal that this do this um, sell cakes for me at your uh, what you call hostel so that they wouldn't have to pay for additional delivery for me to deliver sure. it to them. And all that and that will also ease my just that it will reduce the profit but what is it we can also share the profit as well sure. so guys i hope you are enjoying this like i'm really enjoying it like i love listening to her it's nice uh please subscribe to my channel please like the show. please like the video
and please share them for me okay so we are continuing so uh what is your greatest fear in this business that you are doing and what do you think you can do to manage this fear <laughs> mostly sure. it comes down to cost right? sure. um mostly what i fear the most is i guess to a certain point and uh, my main aim of this was to get let's see you're a student people think we are students so definitely we might have money to buy this kind of mm -hmm. thing yes and that's very bad so since i'm a student yes, i want in a case where i don't have to increase the price to a certain moment that the students cannot, cannot buy afford. cannot afford it sure. just maybe a small student can afford it so my greatest fear right now is things because now most of the prices of things are rising I'm at are yeah, rising running. At, <laughs> they are rising at each time so i don't want to be focused on what i be. wanted to do rather than sure. thinking of the profits i'm going to make let me start it from the side mm -hmm. comparing the time that you were just a student not yeah. being an entrepreneur not being a worker mm -hmm. so to this time that you came to add the working aspect to it how has it affected you it has really affected me both good and both bad but let me say the advantages are more than the, the disadvantages so if i talk about the good parts I'm, i used to be someone who just lay around and not do anything yeah. and he gets sure. it so i wouldn't let me say some things are there i wouldn't bother doing it but now and maybe i wouldn't mingle with them much but now with my customers I have to mingle with them, talk to them how they feel and everything. And also, it has really made me productive. It has really made me productive. Because if at first I was just, uh, what do you call? Just, uh, let me see. I was just learning. And even the learning part is not even that effective. <laughs> Time consciousness. I used not to be time conscious. Sometimes I can skip class and all that. But these days, some of the lecturers know my face. Where is the pizza girl? Then she come to class. <laughs> so definitely I have to go to class and I'm always conscious on what I'm doing because I know someone might see it and be like, isn't this the pizza girl or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So what is your favorite aspect of being an entrepreneur? If you look at everything that you do, what has been your favorite part of my being an entrepreneur? My favorite part is the, uh, what do you call it? my comments from my customers. Oh, okay. Whenever they buy the pizza and be like, I really like your pizza. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> at that time, I can't even give the pizza to you for free. <laughs> I got, I'm Please, very serious. Please, you're giving me nice and few. <laughs> yeah, very yeah. serious. When I buy, I'll be like, Mommy, so beautiful like i just <laughs> like it when my friends call and they said that okay today i didn't like your pizza okay. just there was something and i and i like that about my friends like i just want them to be free and say that this wasn't good about your pizza but i like them to always say oh your pizza too was nice like i really enjoyed it thank you very much i really like that and most some too i don't know but Sometimes I get credit that I was like, well, if I wasn't being pizza, how would I get how credit or something yeah. like that? It has made me talk to some of the lecturers that I wish I, I never I knew you. I was going to ever sure. talk to them or even get famous. So it has opened doors, doors for me. doors for me, seriously. It has. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's come to the general questions. I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. How do you define success? How, in your own words, how will you define success? Okay, I can actually define, but I'll give you some words. Sure. Success is when they are satisfied with what you've done. Yeah, that's great. You are very satisfied with what you've done. You've achieved the aim that you just set for it. That's success. So this means that success is not about like, the way we see people, this person has bought a car, this no, person no, 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 no. is not What if the person has when the car is not for happy? With what, what you are doing, that's yes. like, wow. You've impressed me this afternoon. <laughs> so like, do you believe there is a, a pattern to, become, to becoming successful? Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, but there is no pattern, I tell you. There is no pattern. Just focus on the goal that you set for yourself. And 
then as you achieve it you just be happy because if you are saying there is a pattern somebody then we can see that you can start from a young age and achieve success yeah. but someone who starts and someone will not end well mm -hmm. so just uh, focus on the goal you've set for yourself and to be able to achieve the success sure. that you want okay it's good mm -hmm. So if you are to start your business once again, mm -hmm. what would you do differently from the way you started? Mm. If you are being given the chance to right now to all start over all again. over again. And okay, I would I would I think I would get investors. Sure. <laughs> because one thing I've learned about business is that um, if you can buy stuffs in book it reduces the cost the of cost. what you are going to do uh, and if like you get some stuff that you are supposed to because some of my stuff like, i have to get them for a car and oh, okay. it's sometimes the same transportation and you let's say buying yes. 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 but you have to get, get a thing from, from a car oh, so okay. let's say if i wanted to let's say the pizza boxes if i wanted to buy 50 pizza boxes and if i buy 50 pizza boxes the delivery from that place to this place is maybe 60 cities yeah. it's the same as me buying 100 and yeah the same yeah, delivery yeah. 60 cities sure, sure, so you yeah, sure. could have reduced cost by then once you said success is being satisfied with what you do yeah. so do you have can you tell me some three things or three top most things that you think you can do to become successful yeah okay okay so it depends on the type of success you want to achieve mm -hmm. if you are if you're on my side and you want to achieve success on being in the student entrepreneur and being good at what you do you have to take the people around you very seriously Serious. because they are i'm telling you they are going to make you rich someday be careful of the people around you and focus on don't divert your attention sure. be focused seriously be very focused and be disciplined okay so what are the top three so far where you've gotten to what are what would you say are the top three tricks to becoming a successful entrepreneur to become a successful it's let me say it's the people around you and what you do differently from what others from what are doing. others are doing if you know that if let's say right now somebody comes into um you might also selling pizza I will just try and see their strategy and see how best I could add on to my strategy. Yeah. What do you think I'm doing? Uh, what, do, what do I think I can add up? If it's the taste that maybe people are not liking it, let me improve on my taste. Even if you have to acquire a new skill to add up to it, just do it. Okay, so what key activities do you, will you recommend for other entrepreneurs to invest their time in? Key things. Sure. Invest in the people that you are selling the pizza. Sure. I always so focus on like, your customers. Just about her yes. customers. My customers, like, like I really like my customers very well. Just invest. If sometimes you can't even just go and visit them. Please don't. For no reason. For no reason. Oh, okay. Sometimes if it's their birthday and you just want to surprise them with one of your packages, just, just do, do it. Just do it. Do it. Ah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm inviting them. <laughs> We invite him, remember? I say. So, um, what is your greatest inspiration in life? My greatest inspiration. What? Let's say there's something that has ever happened to you and the thing has inspired you a lot. Or maybe someone says something and the thing has really inspired you. What my has been your greatest, greatest inspiration? inspiration? Might be my mom. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wow. She has been there for me ever since. Let me see. My dad passed away. So oh, okay. I just want to make her proud. She doesn't expect more from me, but I just want to make her proud. You are doing I it. can just be you like. Just it can be a month, and I've not <laughs> asked money from her. Hey, she will be like, my mother, <laughs> my, my mommy is a bit So some things are there. Wow. I don't have to worry here. Like probably wow. I'm in a host. I have to wow. pay lights. I have to pay my gas bill. And wow. Sometimes release them of that bed. Get it? Release them of such of those Mama, wait for me, yeah. I'll get there soon. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Get there. Get there. <laughs> release them of that bed and, sure. and sometimes because sometimes they are stressing out oh. my mom will say i'm investing in you so come out with a better plan for me someday okay 
So right now, we are bringing this interview to an end. It's almost 30 minutes. Yeah. There are so many youth in Ghana out there, like students who are really struggling to make ends meet. Yeah. And that is the main reason why I wanted to, I wanted to yeah. interview you so that you inspire them. You tell them something that against all odds, against mm -hmm. the economy of Ghana, against whatever they are going through, they can still succeed. Yeah. So what is one thing that you can tell people out there who are struggling to do something? They just want some words of motivation mm -hmm. to push them there. So I want you to tell them something. Okay, so I just want to say you can do anything you set your mind on. Sure. And one thing is look around you, check what is not there, and use it to your advantage. Look around you, check what is not there, and use it to your advantage. And I'm telling you, you are going to achieve success someday. Wow. You are going to achieve success one day. So guys, this has been really like it has been this is my first interview on my channel and i really love it like it will continue for you guys please subscribe to my channel yes, don't forget do. oh my missus said do. please <laughs> don't forget to hit on the bell icon mm -hmm. like don't forget that one then don't forget to do it Subscribe. Like the video, like the video for me, okay? Yeah. And please share for others to listen, for others to know. Today I was here with Mami C, who is a student entrepreneur at the University of Mines and Technology, Umat Takwa. She sells pizza. Uh, what else? Cake. Cake, milkshake, milkshake, ice cream. For your birthdays, yes. for your like anything. Phone will call her. She will come. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> so let her put her number there for you guys. I will put the number on the screen, but I want her to mention the numbers for you guys. Okay, so the name of my pizza, um, the company is Hostel Crust. Hostel Crust, like what is it, Crust? Like, <laughs> ah, my okay, God. so my number 0551 580433. Okay. And you can also contact my roommate Christina Kudong 0241446461. Sure, thank you so much, my missus, for you, being yeah. here with me. Thank you for inviting me. Hi, I'm okay. so honored. <laughs> <laughs> and so, guys, I'll get back to you some other time. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, bye, bye. Don't forget to subscribe. Sure.